It is 612 and as we were going to break, Brooks talking about being in Hamilton County and how it feels like home up there. And Brooke, I have to agree with you. It's very welcoming when I do go to Hamilton County and it's pretty cool. They're celebrating their bicentennial and you're with organizers this morning learning more about this. So what can we expect? Good morning, Dave. Well, everything is actually happening on Monday, so we're just doing a little preview this morning, but a celebration will be taking place here at the county courthouse at 11 o'clock. So speakers will be here inside and they'll be signing a proclamation. We'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute, and then they're actually going to go outside to do a flag raising ceremony. And joining me this morning to tell me a little bit more is John Chapman. He is the chairman of the county board, and we've been talking a little bit about the proclamation this morning, so I didn't give too much away, but go ahead and fill us in on what you're going to be doing here and a little bit more about the ceremony. Well, first of all, Brooke, I'd like to thank the co-chairman, Jerry Prince and Andy Rubenacker of the Bicentennial Committee and all the hard work that they've put in to get us to this point. Uh, on February 8th, we will be 200 years old as a county in Hamilton County. And we are going to have a flag raising ceremony on February the 8th uh, at the courthouse at 11 a.m., as I understand it, to celebrate and commemorate that. Uh, Hamilton County was formed uh, basically as a split off from White County. And uh, Hamilton County is a very large geographic county comprising of 426 square miles. We are very low population with a little over 8,000 people, but uh, we feel like it's a good, good county, good place to live, low crime. And that just means everybody knows everybody and they're all friendly. Everybody knows everybody. So, <laughs> but uh, all in all, it's a really good place to raise, uh, to raise your children, raise your family. And uh, the three of us have been lifelong residents of the county, lived here all of our lives. And of course we hold it dear to our hearts. So. And you told me an FF off camera or a fun fact about Hamilton County and where it got its name. So go ahead and fill in the viewers at home. Hamilton County was named after Alexander Hamilton and Alexander Hamilton was the Secretary of the Treasury from 1789 to 1795. And he also was the head of the U.S. Army uh, in 1799. And that's, that's how Hamilton County derived the name Hamilton is from Alexander Hamilton. So. Well, a nice strong name after someone who, you know, made some great accomplishments in our history. So thank you so much for joining me this morning and talking a little bit about the ceremony. Again, that's going to be happening here at the Hamilton County Courthouse on Monday, starting at 11 o'clock in the morning. Coming up, we'll talk a little bit more about the celebration. But for now, over to you, Nick. Brooke is happy this morning to be indoors. Great spot to be to uh, mm -hmm. uh, be away from the cold. It is a cold and frosty morning. We've had clear skies. Guys, I was telling tellin you earlier, I busted yesterday's forecast. I messed it up. I thought we were going to have a in lot a of clouds way. around. Yeah, I messed it up in a good way. I like those types of uh, mess ups because, well, you know, we had a lot of sunshine around yesterday afternoon and we're going to enjoy a lot of sunshine today. Clear skies through the overnight hours, though, allowing temperatures to really dip back in the lower 20s. We've got a lot of frost out there this morning. So once again, uh, allow yourself some time to heat up the car. A lot of you on the Benton Square. That sunrise coming up this morning at 658 a.m. Just starting to get those first glimpses of the light on the horizon. Today is the best day in the forecast. It's the warmest and likely also the sunniest showing up even in our 10 day forecast gives you an idea of what is in store for us here through the rest of this weekend, especially through the weekend. In fact, some wet weather returns on Thursday also brings some wind with it and Friday looking like a dry day, but then our next storm system right on its heels coming in here to start the weekend, potentially bringing us a little bit of snow there on a Saturday, something we're going to be talking about here in just a minute or so right now, though, outside temperatures are into the lower 20s. It is a cold and frost morning again bundle up this morning coldest morning so far this week. We've got a lot of low clouds well to our east mostly clear skies through the overnight hours. Just a few high thin cirrus clouds moving up over overhead from the west and northwest. Your neighborhood forecast here 42 degrees in Mount Vernon and in McLeansboro this afternoon. Ridgeway jumping up to about 42 as well. Marion expected high temperature there about 44 today 45 in Carbondale and to the south Vienna on I 24 up to about 43 degrees. Metropolis running up to about 44 as well. Maybe a couple high thin clouds in southern Illinois. Probably not going to be the case, though, into western Kentucky. 44 this afternoon in Paducah, 44 as well into Wycliffe. Clinton, Kentucky also running up to about 44 to 45 degrees. Across southeast Missouri, a chance some areas of the Ozarks even climb into the upper 40s this afternoon. Lots of blue sky, though. Again, most of those high thin clouds will be in some of our far northern counties. Big storm system working its way through the northeastern U.S. Still dropping snow this morning through New York and back into Pennsylvania. That's getting on out of here. High pressure in control today. 
Going to keep things quiet here at least for about another 18 hours. Here's our next weather maker this morning. That is coming over the Rocky Mountains in the way of a cold front. It will arrive into our region as we go throughout the day on Thursday. Out ahead of it, showers begin to show up into the area first thing on Thursday morning. This is 8 a.m. Most of these showers, at least through the first half of the day on Thursday, look to be very, very light. Some of the heaviest rain right likely right along the cold front Thursday afternoon and then Thursday evening. Notice that blue and that pink showing up there. There's a chance we could briefly see a change over to some sleet and snow before it all wraps up. Not expecting any accumulation from the winter perspective, but uh, likely going to pick up about a half an inch of rain on average out of this next storm system. So that in, comes in here on Thursday, about a 90% chance of wet weather. Friday, lots of clouds around, high temperatures going back into the lower 40s. Then we get into the weekend. That's where things get a little more interesting. Right now, a 60% chance, some rain and snow mixture there Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening. And then the bottom really falls out towards the second half of the weekend. This is an Arctic cold front going to move through. Notice where the rain is here in the western Kentucky. The best chance of seeing at least some minor accumulation will be across parts of southeast Missouri and southern Illinois. And then again, the cold air, it's set to arrive for the second half of the weekend. Check this out. Sunday morning, actual temperature, single digits in some areas, and then we also expect wind chills back near or even below zero. So again, guys, some big changes on the way here as we head into the second half of the weekend. Sunday morning on average about 12 Sunday afternoon high temperatures well below freezing, and we're going to stay below freezing for several days. Monday morning, 10 degrees. Monday afternoon, 28 degrees. We're going to add in those three days. You can only find those here at News 3. 30 on Tuesday, 29 next Wednesday, 28 on Thursday. Guys, finally, by Friday, we may finally uh, climb back above freezing. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm ready for it to warm up. Yeah, you know, we've had it so good so far through the winter months. Uh -huh. It's all getting ready to change. Well, speaking of warming up, Abby's got a story that might just do that for us, Abby. Well, in this week's Unsung Hero, one woman is being thanked for her efforts in helping Heron bring back Christmas lighting. Now, Brenda Brewster is a lifelong resident of Heron, and she says the city didn't have decorations for a few years. So in 2019, she decided it was time 